You have a MacBook and an external display attached to it. Your average office monitor in this case. In fact, it's the same monitor you used to connect to your older Intel-based MacBook and it worked perfectly fine. However, when you connect the same display to this newer MacBook model, which is built around Apple's own silicon M1, like in this case, or M2, the picture on the external display seems to be a little bit off. There is lots of brightness flickering and color shimmering, especially on certain colors. And the reason why this is happening could be summarized in a decades-old saying, bought an Apple product, suffer. So the problem here is you. You voluntarily invested in Apple products and that poor decision-making of yours comes back with a vengeance. Maybe some Apple Silicon-based MacBooks and desktops, for that matter, do come with an HDMI or a display port out. I don't know because I am not an expert in the intricacies of flavor differences of sh sophisticated products from Apple and I couldn't care less. However, this particular machine only has Type-C and you are supposed to have everything plugged in into Type-C, including your monitors. Type-C is just a connector. It can be anything starting with USB 2.0, but USB 4.0 and Thunderbolt connections do have display capabilities, usually in the form of Alt-DP or Alternative DisplayPort capability. So you can use a Type-C to DisplayPort cable to be able to connect a DisplayPort on your monitor to the MacBook Type-C out. DisplayPort, at least until very recently, used to have HDMI backward compatibility, which is now largely phased out. So if you have an HDMI port on your monitor, you need to have an adapter and an active adapter in this case, that means it has some internal conversion logic in the form of a chip that is a microcontroller to connect it to HDMI sources. In this particular case, I'm using this small USB Type-C dock, which supports power delivery, has several USB ports and an HDMI out, which can extract video signal from the Type-C connection. However, regardless of which adapter is used, this display still has shimmering and color artifacts when connected to a MacBook. It works perfectly with any other source, but not this particular MacBook. The best and only fully complete way to resolve this issue on an M1 or M2 processor from Apple, which have the graphic cards built in, is to use a monitor that natively supports Thunderbolt. That doesn't have to be another Apple product. You can use other monitors, but they need to natively support input from a Thunderbolt connection. This seems the only way to resolve this issue. However, those monitors are still rare. And if you are not willing to invest in another display, given that you already own a perfectly working display, you are probably looking into at least somehow reduce this issue. And this is an Apple issue. This entire video is not me bashing Apple. I couldn't care less about Apple products. But display manufacturers, for example, BenQ, which is one of the leading manufacturers of computer monitors, have pages on their websites dedicated to this exact issue. So it's not something limited to my particular setup. And this is not about me bashing Apple. This is a well-known problem that has been around for at least two or three years and Apple couldn't care less to fix it. There doesn't seem to be a complete and full way to resolve this issue. So that must be a hardware or a firmware issue on the Apple part. However, you can greatly reduce the discomfort. So you can try four things. The first one are the steps mentioned on the Banky website. Basically, they say that you need to turn off dark theme. You should also change the color profile for the monitor to color LCD. You must also disable variable refresh rate and lower refresh rate to 60 Hz. In this particular case, it is a 60 Hz monitor, so the refresh rate is already 60 Hz and this option is not even available. They also tell you to turn off night shift, which wasn't enabled in the first place, 
and they recommend to turn off auto adjust brightness and true tone. However, they seem to be using an older version of macOS, or maybe not. Again, I'm not an expert on Apple sh shenanigans, so I'm not sure, but in this particular Mac OS version, I couldn't find these options. So if this doesn't help, you can force your MacBook to output video signal in RGB. To do that, you first need to have Homo Bro, uh, sorry, Homebrew enabled on your MacBook, and then install a certain utility. First you run this command, which installs Fish command manager, then you run it and install a script, then you use this command to force RGB, and after you are done, there is a very important step. You need to first log out, not turn off, but log out out of your user session in the macOS, and then shut down the computer as normal. And then, after you turn it back on, your display output should be in sRGB. But this didn't help to fix the issue in this particular case. But there is an app for that. You know, Apple operating systems come basically bare, and then you have to purchase functionality that is freely available and built in into other operating systems to have it in Mac OS. The program you need to install is named Better Display, it's a paid program, but you know you have options, right? And what you need to do in Better Display is disable dithering. If you don't want to invest in this program or obtain it otherwise, there is a free and I believe open source utility which is named Steel Color. So instead of Better Display, install Steel Color and enable the option which is called Disable Dithering. So to disable dithering, you need to enable disable dithering. And after I did this, the flickering and color shimmering became much less noticeable. It is still there, it's not a perfect fix, but this is your best bet to counter this issue on Apple Silicon M1 and M2 devices. I will leave links to all of these programs on my website, which you can find in the description to this video. I'm the god of YouTube! Like, subscribe, jingle bells.